the record button. Uh, we're recording and we're now live. Uh, good evening, everyone, and uh, well, I, I guess uh, morning to most of you. Uh, I'm in an interesting time zone based here in New Zealand. Uh, I have seen the future that has already happened in terms of, you know, insofar as time zones go. And I can assure you that you're going to have a wonderful Thursday. Um, and so it's a, a good way to start the day. So I was rather pleased, Brian, and, and thank you for the invitation to uh, come and join you on this you know, interesting initiative around cost-effective ways of building open online courses. I mean, I think it is a very sort of timely intervention, and um, you know, thank you for inviting us to come along and share some of the things that we've been doing uh, in you know, building open online courses. So what I might just do at this point is start a screen share so we can... Uh, I have a couple of slides. Is that coming through for you? Yes. yes. Right. Basically, what I thought I would do is I would just give a brief background, a short summary of the OER Universitas Initiative and the OER Foundation, who we are, to give a bit of context, and then we'll break for you know, any questions or thoughts or uh, you know, information you'd like to get about the OERU and how it relates to the challenges of building um, cost-effective, um, you know, open online courses. Um, and then what I'll actually do is show you how we go about building open online courses at the OERU using, you know, real case examples. And uh, hopefully we can have uh, a little discussion around that. So I hope that's uh, a good way of tackling this. And uh, without further ado, let's uh, move on. So I work for uh, the Open Education Resource Foundation, which is an independent nonprofit entity that uh, provides leadership, networking, and support to education institutions around the world to achieve their strategic objectives through the use of OER and uh, open education projects. Uh, we are a charitable organization. Uh, we are a very small organization. In fact, we only have two full-time staff members. Uh, and so the, the topic of you know, cost-effective and affordable ways of building open online courses is first and foremost in our minds. So we've spent quite a bit of time thinking about how we do this within our environment. Uh, I should also note that we are an, an open source software collaboration. Everything that we do is entirely based. Our full uh, technology stack uh, is based on free and open source software, which uh, is, is also an important a values based commitment of our organization. Uh, we administer three flagship initiatives one, which is the Wiki Educator Project. Uh, which is a collaboration today of so, some 80,000 educators around the world who are really committed to the heart of the education endeavor, which is to share knowledge freely. Uh, we also host uh, Creative Commons Aotearoa New Zealand, which is the national affiliate for Creative Commons here in New Zealand. And, uh, of course, the OERU, the OER Universitas uh, Initiative, I don't think I need to uh, introduce open education resources uh, to this group here, but uh, as you well know, these are educational materials which are openly licensed in ways which allow us to reuse, remix, revise, and uh, redistribute education materials. And uh, the OERU is entirely based on, or, or, or all our courseware, in fact, is based entirely on OER and open access resources. The um, OERU is, is really about providing more affordable pathways for uh, learners to gain globally recognized qualifications. Uh, it, it is a low risk, uh, low cost and high impact initiative. And we are really focusing on those learners in, in, in many parts of the world who for whatever reasons, whether it is cost or lack of provision in their, you know, their own countries, uh, to, to, to gain access to education. So we're really trying to target those learners who will not ordinarily have the privilege of a higher education. Uh, the concept is a simple but a very powerful one. Uh, we build open online courses that are based entirely 
on OER. And uh, the fact that these courses are based entirely on OER and open access materials means that the learners will not need to purchase any prescribed oh. textbooks or any course materials in order to participate in the OERU. Um, of course, being uh, OER, it means any institution in the world is free to reuse uh, any of our courses and, in fact, integrate them on campus for their own full fee, uh, full time students. Uh, we offer OERU courses at no cost to the learners. Uh, we have, uh, through the smart use of technologies, ways of supporting learners through peer to peer support and the concept of Academic Volunteers International, which will be implemented as the initiative grows. And our partner institutions offer a, assessment services, assessment only services of these courses, which have been assembled for independent study. Uh, which are mapped to real academic credit. Our partner institutions will issue transcript credit, and we have systems in place uh, which work on a credit transfer system so that learners can earn you know, exit qualifications within the OERU. Uh, we are a global collaboration. Um, we have all oh, 30 partners from uh, five uh, major regions of the world, uh, North America, uh, Europe, uh, the Middle East, Africa, Oceania, and um, Asia. Uh, so our footprint is quite global, uh, and we are growing from day to day. Uh, we like to talk about the OERU model as being smart philanthropy. Um, the lessons that we learn by uh, designing these open online courses through principles of open design uh, provide opportunities to plow back these lessons that we learn into mainstream operations on campus. Um, it's smart philanthropy because our partner institutions don't require new money in order to engage with the OERU. Uh, the recurrent cost for um, uh, recouping the assessment services that our partner institutions are providing is guaranteed because they recoup through a fee-for-service. Our partner institutions have autonomy in the pricing levels for those uh, assessment services. We are targeting underserved markets, uh, which means um, there's it, it, it little or no risk uh, of uh, cannibalizing in your existing student bodies. Uh, we are serving discrete markets. And there are clearly opportunities for generating new revenue streams and new forms of business within the OERU. And in fact, we've had um, two regional uh, clusters of meetings, one in North America and Oceania, uh, to develop um, open business models uh, around how the OERU uh, functions and um, how institutions can actually think about generating new revenue streams from the model. And, and these resources are all uh, available on the OERU website. Clearly, as a collaboration, we have a strong commitment to uh, uh, social good and community service goals of you know tertiary education institutions. Most tertiary education institutions around the world do have uh, a, a community service goal, at least those that are public funded, and uh, the OERU uh, is 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 a way of um, achieving these community service goals. Uh, the contribution from individual partners is small. The only requirement is to assemble just two courses based entirely on, uh, on, on OER. And through the network effect, we are able to build full programs. I'm pleased to announce that at our recent international partners meeting, it was hosted by the University of Highlands and Islands in Inverness a couple of weeks ago, has confirmed the launch of our first year of study that will be leading to two exit awards, uh, a certificate of general studies that would be conferred by Thompson Rivers University, uh, as well as a certificate of higher education business, uh, which will be conferred by the University of Highlands and Islands. We're also quite excited about one of our new course offerings at the first year level, uh, the, uh, this course, Learning in a Digital Age, which has been intentionally designed uh, to support uh, new learners in, in higher education to acquire the digital and learning literacies of, of the 21st century. So as 
a foundation preparatory course, which will be credit bearing as, as part of the offerings. So um, let me leave it there uh, just for now and uh, open up the floor to any questions you might have about the OERU before we start delving into the intricacies of how we can go about developing OERU courses. Any thoughts and um, any questions from the floor? I'm just reading through the chat here. I don't see any questions here. Are you happy for me to move on, Brian, Damien, Eba? Yes, um, maybe one question. Uh, I often um, uh, have um, presentations uh, about uh, OER and MILFs, etc. Um, last week I had a presentation for two people in uh, uh, Sweden. Most of the people were from uh, Africa and uh, India and uh, Israel. Uh, how, how, and they ask, how do you, have, and I always, you know, uh, promote uh, Open uh, OER University. Um, but I often got questions, how do people um, apply? Just to, to search for the courses and uh, how, how does it work? So, so, so the question, if I understand this correctly, Eva, there was a, a bit of audio interference. But the question is, how would um, learners apply to uh, participate in OERU, or how do organisations participate to apply? I mean, I can, I, I can yeah. cover both, both questions. Yeah. Yes, the learners. Okay. I'll, I'll, well, let's go through a case uh, case example here. Uh, let me just get rid of this here. Let me get rid of that there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the OERU uh, website. So this is the uh, you know the OERU website, and imagine I'm a learner. I, I would come into the website and I would say, well, okay, I'm interested in you know taking a couple of courses. Let's um, have a look at what the future courses will be. Uh, one of the courses that is going to be offered as part of the first year of study is this course here, the inspiring challenge of you know, sustainable development. Learners will be able to see, well, okay, um, this is what the course is about. This is what I'm going to learn. This is what's involved. Now, these are the people that assemble the course and um, it gives an indication of the, you know, the duration, what is expected. Um, we assemble, uh, what is quite interesting with the OERU is we assemble uh, OERU courses as micro courses, which are roughly about 40 notional learning hours each. And the reason we do that is because of the differences in course sizes in different parts of the world. Um, and so, for example, a typical course in North America, a three-credit course in North America, is roughly about 120 notional learning hours, whereas a typical course here in, uh, in New Zealand would be 150 notional learning hours. In Australia, it's 160 notional learning hours. Brian, if I'm uh, uh, in, in the UK, most modules are around 200 notional learning hours. So, so we've got these differences in course sizes, which obviously poses an interesting challenge uh, you know, around credit transfer towards qualifications. And the way that we uh, deal with this is to assemble courses, um, micro courses, which are roughly 40 notional learning hours. So in the case of Australia and New Zealand, learners would typically take four micro courses in order to equate to the equivalent of one university level course here. Whereas in the UK, they would need to complete five micro courses for the equivalent of you know, in, in credits. And uh, in, in, in the UK, in North America, it would be three micro courses. I just wanted to explain that micro course concept um, and, and, and why we do that. And, uh, micro courses also offer us the opportunity for micro credentials. 
and in fact a number of our partner institutions for example Otago Polytechnic will be opening uh, will be offering open badges for each of our micro courses and how this will work is if the uh, learner completes the four micro courses that are required it would be assessed learning of course um, they would then qualify for transcript credit which is the mechanism for transferring credit into one of the qualifications offered by our partner institution. So, um, at this point, what the learner would do is they would then just click right through and they would uh, land up at, you know, the, the OER course material. So, this is an example of an open online course uh, on the OERU platform. Um, one of the key features of the OER, well, uh, key requirements of a course that, uh, within the OERU context because of our commitment to being open is that no learner should be denied access to our course materials uh, for need of having to register a password. All our course materials are openly accessible without the need to register a password in order to access the materials and that's very important for us as a kind of a values-based commitment as being an open organization. Um, so, Eba, Eba, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Yes, uh, thank you very much for going to uh, a bit more detail. Thank you. Great. Any other questions from the uh, from the floor? Our colleagues from UNISA. Mm -hmm. Yaron? So, in, in, Indira has uh, posed a question in, in chat, how do we track uh, students' progress and participation? Um, that's, that's a very good question. Um, in terms of tracking individual learner progress, uh, in a system, I'm just going to mute everybody's uh, mics here for the time being. I'm getting a bit of a feedback loop. Okay, um, it, it, it's, a, it's a very good question because um, we don't require password access, so we don't have the identity of the student as they're progressing through the materials, right? Um, in the, OER, the case of the OER, in the case of the OERU, um, any registration is, Any registration um, is optional. So we do require registration if a learner is going to comment on um, any of our microblog uh, tools or our discussion forums that we host. If any uh, interactions are posted on technologies that we host at the OERU, uh, the password uh, registration is required. And the reason for that is the mechanism for spam measurement. Um, but that said, we do keep detailed um, statistics, obviously website statistics of all the visits to all the pages. So we actually have a good sense of how learners are progressing through the course materials, although we aren't able to tie um, that progress to individual learner identities necessarily. Uh, it's only in cases where learners have registered uh, in order to participate in sort of discussion forums or whatever, that we can then associate those um, web statistics with you know ind individual individual learners. I should also point out that within the OERU model, remember that um, most of the interactions or uh, assessments are for uh, formative purposes, formative evaluation purposes. Uh, the, the tracking is not required for assessment purposes, you know, for summative assessment, uh, because that assessment is uh, an assessment that is administered by our partner institutions at the end of the course. So we do keep, um, you know, quite detailed statistics. We have a number of uh, interesting and sophisticated engines, which I'll be able to show you uh, as, as we work uh, through the processes that give us good feedback on how the courses are being used. Uh, through a number of uh, the prototype studies we've run in preparing and designing the OERU, it appears that based on the web statistics that learners are actually navigating the courses as we intended them to be navigated. 
Um, so you would, you know, at, at the beginning of the course, we find that the learners are actually doing the things we expect them to be doing at the beginning of the course. As, and um, certainly in terms of our, our web statistics and data. So a little bit about kind of sort of the analytics side of what we're doing uh, in terms of tracking progress. Uh, it is, of course, restricted by the fact that we don't require password access. But um, you know, that's one of the features of these open online environments. Any other questions? If not, I'm happy to move on then. Great. Well, let me move on. This is um, one of the micro courses in a course on sustainable development, creating sustainable futures. And this is what a typical OERU course looks like. Um, it has a startup section, uh, you know, which tells learners how to get started, the things that they need to be doing in order to get started. Um, they can register, it's optional if they want to. Um, there's orientation materials in terms of how to get started and um, you know, how, to, how to study on the course. And what we, do, what we do within these environments is we divide our online courses into what we call learning hardware. So these are the individual learning sequences of course materials. And, and we use the term learning pathways to differentiate from the nomenclature that institutions typically use for calling their own sort of individual sequences of learning, uh, whether those are called study units or topics or modules or whatever, is to have a distinct language for these independent learning sequences. So it makes it easier for us to integrate course materials within existing uh, online learning environments for full fee students and actually run courses in what we call uh, the open boundary format, where we have learners, OERU learners, who are studying or learning in parallel with learners taking uh, courses at our partner institutions as full fee students. Uh, where, you know, and of course, the full fee students get full tutorial support, whereas in the OERU model, we, we don't provide tutorial support simply because we, I mean, we can't afford it. And so this is what a, a learning pathway would um, look like. Uh, you know, it's typically broken down into a number of sub pages. Uh, you will see here, I mean, there's an overview and this particular course is a short video signpost, uh, which introduces the concept. Um, and then the learner is guided through a number of sub pages, right? Uh, you know, as they progress through the learning sequence. And this course has been designed around a number of learning challenges. Um, and a typical learning challenge is uh, in, in an OERU course is very often broken down into sort of three components. Um, the initiation component of a learning challenge where you know, we tell the learners what the learning challenge is about. They get a sense of you know, why it is they're doing it. Um, you know, a couple of stimulus resources which might help them through the learning challenge. Um, they're then typically given a number of tasks to carry out. So here are the tasks that they carry out and the last component of the, the, these learning challenges very often is a statement of the, you know, the outputs that they need to produce. And we make frequent use of uh, blogging uh, as, as outputs for our learners where we encourage learners to uh, host their own uh, course blog and we, we provide materials for for learners on how to set up their own course blog. Uh, but the big advantage of maintaining uh, a course blog is that the learners will have access to the learning artifacts that they have created uh, during a course and will have permanent access to their own resources even after the course is finished. Not like uh, you know, a, a learning management system that where learners might make many contributions and then after the course, you know, it's repopulated for the next year's course and the learners lose access in, in some cases to the learning artifacts that they've been producing. So that's more or less what a, a learning uh, or our learning pathways look like. Um, other interesting components of the OERU model is uh, our courses uh, are, are based on learners uh, managing their own personal learning environments. And so one of the features we incorporate in our courses is this course feed. And so this is a live course that was uh, run a couple of weeks ago. And if you look at the course feed here, you will see 
that we are harvesting interactions from different sources. So, for example, this um, uh, post here comes from forums.oeru.org. That is an open source um, forum engine uh, we, which is built on Discourse, uh, which is run as a separate um, forum facility uh, where learners can post if they wanted to. These uh, posts here, uh, which are marked course, is our own microblogging uh, feature within courses. Uh, possibly I should show an example of that. Hey, let's have a look here, see if I can find an example. Uh, let's look here, there should be one here. What I'm going to do is, you see, I'm not logged in at the moment, so I'm just going to get a current session, or I might as well just do that here. There. Let me just go here. So you'll see this feature here. So this is uh, microblogging technology. So um, So you get the idea, a learner can post uh, you know, a comment, and what in fact happens is all these comments are harvested uh, in the live course feed. So what you'll see here, you'll see this post, I've just posted through the, the comment feature there. Um, and these are aggregated from different sources, right? Um, so this comes from our, our Wiki Educator Notes feature, which is our own microblogging feature. Um, this one comes from the forum site. Uh, I want to see if I can find the blog post here. Um, just to show you how this works. If we're lucky, we'll find a blog post here. Here's a blog post. So I'm just gonna link through to that post. And just to illustrate, um, this is a blog post which the learner right uh, has uh, posted on her own personal blog so that, you know this is how you know we aggregate these things across um, into the live course feed so that's in terms of the interactions um, the other bit of interesting technology um, because these are independent self-study courses right um, some learners who, who register, and remember registra registration is optional, may request to receive course announcements via email. Um, and how we do this is we typically pre-populate the course with all the, the course announcements. But on the back end, we have a, a, a interesting bit of open source technology. Uh, called Maltech, which is an open source marketing automation piece of software. It's a, it's a sophisticated piece of uh, software, which we actually use to help us automate the processes of sending out email instructions. Because remember, we don't provide tutorial support under the OERU model. So... Uh, let's just remember the correct password, yeah. I just want to show you an example of how this works. So this is a piece of software that uh, runs on the back end. Um, and we set up um, specific campaigns for individual courses. So let me find uh, CSS. Or oh, it doesn't really matter which one. So this is a campaign uh, which has been set up to automate the 
email instructions. And so you'll get the idea here. Um, if a learner signs up for the course and has opted to receive email instructions, we will automatically send them, we will add the course tag to, you know, so that we know who they are. Uh, we will send them and, you know, the orientation email. Uh, if they open up the orientation email, we award points. So this relates to the question of how we track learners. So we have this points allocation system to see how learners who opt to register actually progress through the course materials. And then we'll say, well, if this is a cohort-based course, um, you know, wait until the 5th of September, then send them the email um, for the instructions for session one. And uh, it's, you know, an HTML email. Uh, let's see what this looks like here. Let's give an example. So this is the kind of email that learners will see, that, you know, but obviously their name will be substituted because we have that information. Now, welcome to this session. The last session you did this stuff. You're now going to do this stuff. And here are the learning materials you should link through to. And so that's all automated on the back end uh, using uh, you know, open source software. So that's on the course announcements and the course feed. So at this point, any, um, any questions about sort of the high level pedagogy which we've been using for our uh, courses for the minimum viable product? Because then I'll get into the, technology, the technologies we use to actually build these courses. Yeah, a, a question about uh, experience we have uh, around recognition um, for learners, both within the OERU consortium and even outside. So Eva, it's, a, it's an excellent question. To be perfectly honest, because we haven't launched the full first year of study yet, I actually don't know what the answer to that question is. Um, we've run a number of prototype courses. Uh, a number of our learners, uh, a small number of learners, who have actually gained formal academic credit. Uh, we don't have data to what extent these OER materials are being used. Uh, by other institutions. Uh, it's very hard for us to track that. And you will begin to understand why that's the case uh, when you see how these courses are assembled. So what I, what I can tell you is that any educator in the world will be able to set up their own course site like this at no cost using free and open source software technology without the need to install a learning management system or you know any complex technologies we've designed and built this technology in a way that any educator in the world would be able to host one of these course sites um, and the site that you're looking at at the moment is in fact a customized oer university theme for wordpress so our course sites are actually published on wordpress but where this starts getting even more interesting is you'll appreciate within the OERU context because you know we have partners from you know 30 different partners from five different regions in the world some of whom are actually collaborating and working together in designing and developing these courses um, and in, in, in that context it is extremely important to have sophisticated version control on the editing process because this is a collaborative editing process most learning management systems do not support collaborative editing in any substantive uh, or in, in any substantive way. I mean, for example, if you were um, a, a Moodle campus and I were to give you access to a Moodle, we were hosting and say, well, okay, you can collaborate with me on uh, designing and developing this course. If you were to make a change to those course materials, assuming that you had password access, it would be very hard for me to track what changes were made. And so that complicates collaborative uh, development and collaborative authoring within learning management system environments. And so what we do is you'll see here is if you look at any page in, uh, on an OERU course published course site, 
you'll see here there's a link to the source content. And that content comes from a wiki. So we actually used Wiki Educator as the authoring environment for all our courses. And what the wiki does for us, it gives us a detailed version control. So uh, no, that's not what I want to do. If I go and look at the source here, I can, I've got a, you know, this particular page, there weren't uh, many edits on, but I've got a detailed version history of the actual uh, development of that course page. And to show you how this works is if you, if you recall the course site, it has the main first tier navigation headings, you know, startup, course guide, interactions, assignment, learning pathways. The way that we do this in the wiki is we develop an outline page. So let me find the outline page for that particular course. No, that's not that one. Sorry, this is the wrong course. Uh, it's creating sustainable futures. So that was CSF 101. So what we do is we build a course outline and it's a simple structured list, bulleted list, that replicates the site navigation of the published course site. So here's the landing page. The main net first tier navigation is startup, course guide, interactions, assignment, learning pathways. It's a single bullet, right? You look at the main course site again. Startup, course guide, interactions, assignment, learning pathways. If I go into learning pathways, you'll see the first learning pathways, sustainability is entirely possible, right? And then you'll see the sub pages of each uh, for that particular learning pathway. If I go back to the outline, the course outline here for the learning pathways, here the learning pathways, right? You'll see the first learning pathway, sustainability is entirely possible. So that's a second hierarchical level. And the third hierarchical levels are the individual sub pages, right, of that learning pathway. So all we do is we build a separate wiki page for every page on the published WordPress site. And for our OERU partners, uh, we provide hosting services on our courses.overu.org. Um, but it is possible for any educator to set up a free gear on any one of the cloud services, like maybe uh, Red Hat Cloud, and, in, and, and set up the, the theme, WordPress theme, for one of, uh, one of our courses, and actually publish to um, that course site. And we actually have a course, and a micro course, which is in fact available for credit called uh, Digital Skills for Collaborative Development, which actually teaches people how to do this. But in the case of our OERU partners, we provide uh, free hosting services on uh, our own technology for these course sites. And we would love to provide it for every educator in the world, but you know, Wiki Educator has 80,000 educators. Um, um, and you know we just don't have the money to be able to provide that hosting. Uh, but how it works is, uh, you know, you request a snapshot, you fill in your credentials, you say push that snapshot to the WordPress site uh, that I have uh, access credentials on, and the script will run and harvest these materials and convert them into the WordPress uh, the WordPress format. So that's uh, basically how we build and design uh, courses. So I have a, a question on how, how, are, uh, how is the marketing of assessments done? Uh, is it automated or you know, is it self-reflected activities, peer-to-peer -peer assessments, uh, et cetera? So a, again, a very good question. Uh, one of the, uh, because uh, the OERU is based on a model of providing formal academic credit, uh, one of the key principles of engagement at the OERU is that our partner institutions retain decision-making autonomy over all aspects of assessment. So the types of assessment that are used for uh, 
for a formal summative assessment and a formal academic credit are determined by the partner institution. So we at the OERF, at the OERF don't determine what assessment methodologies are used. But to answer your question specifically, all those forms of assessment um, are used within the OERU depending on the capacity and uh, systems that our partner institutions uh, have got on campus. So some courses uh, use automated assessment, some courses are assignment based uh, where the learners uh, submit assignments. Uh, so that would include, you know, reflective uh, type of questions, essay type of questions, you know, the, the kinds of questions you would typically include in an, uh, in an assignment. Um, we have used peer-to-peer uh, -peer assessments as a prototype uh, for formative assessment. Uh, at this stage, we haven't used peer-to-peer -peer learning assessment for summative assessment yet. Because you'll appreciate in our environment, uh, learner identity validation is, is, is quite complex. Because uh, if you, when you're issuing formal credit, you need to make sure that the learner who's being awarded the credit actually did the work. And if we've got a scenario where the learner didn't you know, register for the course, there has to be an, an identity validation process. So in the case of UNISA, it could be a standard challenge exam, right? Uh, where the learner comes to an exam center, center and sits the exam. In other partners, uh, Athabasca University, for example, is using online proctoring uh, through ProctorU. And in fact, Thomas Edison State University also uses online proctoring proctoring one of our partners. Uh, in fact, from memory, at the meeting, they mentioned that they administered over 100,000 assessments last year through online invigilation. So I hope that answers your question there. Uh, so there's a question of, uh, do the courses align with particular curricula? Uh, that comes from Brian. Yes, Brian, they do. Uh, the, the, the OERU courses, at least, that are part of the OERU, um, suite of courses are actually mapped to the formal curricula of the institution that is carrying out the assessment um, for uh, official transcript credit. It is, of course, uh, possible for you know, other institutions to reuse existing courses that you know, may be mapped with uh, uh, their own local courses. Uh, that is possible, but the OERU doesn't uh, Give, you know, give awards. Hey, I think Brian has answered that question. Sorry, Brian, I'm reading off your answer to the question. <laughs> Sorry about that. So I think I've captured all, all the questions that have come in so far. So let, let, me, let me open up the floor again there to, uh, to hear if there are any additional questions. And if there are, just please remember to activate your microphone again or type them in the chat window. Oh, well, this is good news that there's such clarity <laughs> in the OERU model. I'm usually uh, bounded by sort of 20 questions of you know, people that object to what we're doing and uh, I don't understand how the model works and things like that. He says uh, tongue in cheek. Okay, if there are no other questions, what I might do is actually just show you some of the other technologies we use, that, the other open source technologies we use to support open design and development. Um, so in a sort of a collaborative model, we've also got to think about, well, okay, um, what technologies can we use to help uh, support um, you know, these low-cost developments of you know, open online courses? I mean, as I've pointed out, uh, this entire technology stack runs on open source software that anybody can replicate. Uh, it is really a, 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 you know, a, a low cost model. And it's even more low cost when you uh, think about the notions of you know, a pedagogy of discovery where you start directing learners to existing OER and open access resources that are available on the web. So instead of trying reinventing whole courses, we actually point learners to uh, a number of resources uh, on, you know, on the web, which actually cuts down on the development time considerably. 
So if I look at a typical course development, every course that uh, we would develop at the OERU would have a central course planning page. So, this, so we actually use the wiki not only for the authoring of course materials, we also use it for the planning and record keeping of the design and development process. So again, the, you know, it becomes a, a, a very powerful technology in terms of being able to reuse the wiki. So here you'll see this particular course team uh, that was involved with the development of this course. Um, and I should point out that the team members, each of these team members was located in a different city in New Zealand and one of our developers was based out of Spain and also the UK. So the point being is we aren't all in the same institution at the same place. We are actually working collaboratively uh, virtually. So one of the technologies we use to assist with uh, planning, I hope we haven't archived all these development notes here. is a, 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 a Kanban board. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, technologies like Trello. Um, these are um, agile uh, development technologies that are used to help and assist with planning. It's, it's based on a set of cards. And so you basically, we've got a list of cards here of things that we must do, the things that we are doing, the stuff that is almost done and completed and you know, the things that have been done. And each of these cards can be as assigned to particular phases of the development, such as planning, development, review, technology, and so forth. Uh, they can be assigned to you know, individual stakeholders within the group. And basically how this works is we would have an online session like this, and we can you know, move these cards around. I don't know if you're seeing that on the screen. Is that moving for you on screen? Great. So you get the idea. So this becomes sort of an agile development. Uh, in the early days, we attempted uh, using traditional project management methodologies, uh, you know, with Gantt charts and, and, and these sorts of things. And we found that you ended up spending more time keeping the Gantt charts up to date because of the in interdependencies that you have with, you know, an open course design and development. And uh, we found that these Kanban boards are actually uh, considerably more effective in, in helping us uh, you know, plan these developments. Another technology that we use uh, quite extensively are, um, uh, is a technology called groups.oeru.org. This is another piece of uh, open source technology. Let me sign in here. Uh, So for each of our course development teams, we actually have a dedicated email list. I'm just waiting for that to load. We will wait patiently. So you'll think if you, uh, so what, what this actually substitutes, if you're working within a given organization, like, you know, say UNISA, you will have an internal email list, say for your department or for the, you know, a Senate list or a list for different, uh, you know, components in the organization that you can email each other. You must remember in an organization like the OBRU, we distribute it across many organizations that are each using different email systems, right? And so we have to have a, a virtual technology that enables us to collaborate in this way. And so groups.obru.org is an example of such a technology. And so what we would do is we would have a group list uh, for each of our courses. So it's, it's actually an email list, but that there's a web copy of uh, all the emails that have sent uh, have been sent out so that we have got a public record, a public transparent record of all the communications relating to the course development. So this is how our course teams uh, communicate as well as all uh, the working groups uh, that we have uh, with the OERU that uh, help us in planning the implementation of the OERU. The other bit of technology which we use to support our team developments is a technology called uh, chat.oeru.org. Um, some of you may be familiar with Slack, uh, which is a commercial uh, 
proprietary service that uh, offers uh, you know, synchronous chat communication and a number of uh, team uh, features. Um, we use a piece of technology called Rocket Chat. And um, this is our, you know, our online you know, support. It's, it, it, the messages are persistent. You can search for them. You, you'll see, in fact, uh, quite a number of communications here that have been taking place between course developers on our different courses. And um, you know, if you were to you know, contact if, you know, an OERU member, um, and you, you know, you were to post on this chat forum. If it's within sort of daylight hours of New Zealand, we do a pretty good job, you know, of, of you know answering these you know these questions. So this is how we get immediate feedback on any technical questions or you know where, where people want to bounce ideas around particular course developments. And again, this is uh, an, you know an open source technology. Uh, you know to help us keep costs down, but uh, it's a very uh, useful. Um, technology stack for designing you know, for open design and development of OERU courses. Uh, the big advantage, of course, with you know these open source technologies, the approach that we use at the OER Foundation is you know we can we can install a new technology, and if we find that our uh, the users within the network um, you, you know like the technology, and you know, in technical terms we talk about technology which sticks. If the technology sticks, you know, we use it and integrate it into our development models. Um, if we find that particular technologies aren't getting traction with uh, our user base, uh, we just discard them. We haven't lost money in, you know, trialing and setting up um, the, you know, these resources. There's a good question on where are the resources for uh, digital skills. So the, the URL is course.oeru.org and the, it's DS for OER is the market course. DS for OER. Uh, hang on, I've got a course of DS. What have I done here? Sorry, I had the wrong URL. I'll share it in the chat window now. So the link I've just shared now in the chat window is the link to the actual course materials. So what this course actually does is, you know, teaches people how to do this using, you know, the Wiki Educated Technologies. And what we've done is we've actually developed uh, the course in a way that users will be able to publish their own course site um, using a, a WordPress image on a Reddit Cloud, for example. So this will give you the ability to set up your own blog on a free gear. Um, and it's all WordPress. It's actually not hard to do. You just click a button. And then you can set up the script. We've got an, uh, a, a, an image on GitHub that you just download the customized theme. It's all open source for free. There's no charges. We want as many people to get access to courses as possible. Um, and so this is for people who aren't OERU partners. Many of our learners aren't OERU partners, but we want to, to share the, the, the skills and ability for anybody to be able to do this. So I hope you'll find that useful. So, any other other questions? We um, we're getting to the top of the hour, but I'm I'm happy to stay on and answer any other questions you may have. Uh, don't feel um, uh, that you need to run away now. But I I realize we did schedule for an hour, but happy happy to answer any additional questions. And if you want to, we are a small group. You're most welcome to take the microphone. Ryan, I'd be interested to hear how the approach that we're using compares with some of the things that you were doing. With your, uh, with your MOOC, yeah. Sorry, I, I just had a little technical problem there. Was that question for me? 
Oh yeah, yes, I was. I was just saying, Brian. I'd be keen, to, uh, curious to know, and keen to hear what what you guys were doing on on, on your course for uh, low cost notes. Well, uh, to some extent, what we were doing is we're concentrating on the content aspect of it. Is that if you have a course, how to rapidly develop and cheaply develop content, uh, particularly video content. Um, we do address the issue of platforms, and uh, I suppose we look at all the obvious ones. I wouldn't have thought OERU is one of the more obvious ones that people are aware of, but we do talk about that as well. But as I say, we more uh, talk about content, and I have to say, it, it does bring up a question for me that I think one of the most important Parts of this project is the accreditation and the giving awards that uh, um, encouraging members to to create some sort of assessments and to give awards. But the thing is that uh, there's a lot of courses out there and a lot of different platforms. It's very hard for a platform like OERU to reach a critical mass. So I wonder to what extent do you think your partners that might be interested in giving awards might accept courses from other sources other than OERU? Or is that going to be a part of the strategy going forward? So, so the big, it, it's a good question, Brian. Um, the decision that was taken at the 2015 partners meeting was to assemble the minimum viable product on a single platform um, for you know, a number of reasons, get the project moving, let us get to a point that you know, we've got the first year of study launched uh, because to, you know, it's like herding cats. You know, if you've got 14 different platforms and everybody trying to do their own thing, it's very hard to get to a point and achieve some level of consistency. But we also had to be very conscious and thoughtful around the design or the technologies that we're using to actually facilitate ease of integration within the local uh, learning management systems. And, and, and this approach actually enables us to do that. Um, you know, from our perspective at the foundation, we've got any of eight different learning management systems within the network. Um, and we've designed these courses intentionally from a strategic planning point of view to be able to accommodate what we call open boundary courses. So that's where you would have, you know, OERU learners studying on their own independent study, no tutorial support, but learning in parallel with um, uh, learners who are full fee students enrolled at our partner institutions as they would normally do through the online programs. When you've got that scenario, there are interesting ways of connecting the learner studying for you know, the full-time, full-fee registered students, interacting or integrating the interactions with the sort of free learners and you know, the peer learners uh, and, and or, or start using sort of peer-to-peer -peer learning technologies. And what, where this becomes interesting is that local regional institutions within the network we'd be able to start marketing international intercultural learning experiences because our courses typically attract learners from between 50 to 100 different countries. And that's something that's quite marketable to you know, a small regional institution that doesn't, doesn't typically have a large international audience, particularly in subject areas that are conducive to you know, that wide range of international engagement. And so we, we've got a small number of partners now actually starting to think quite critically around this uh, open boundary course model. And so one of the flagship prototypes we're going to be working with in actually you know, testing this model with a number of partners is the learning in the digital age course. Um, because you know, that, that's a course where the skills space is, you know, is, is needed across every single institution. And we have three partners who have uh, basically put their hands up thus far and said, hey, we actually want to you know, make sure that that course is mapped to our own credits, towards our own qualifications as an elective within our own programs, which we want to teach locally. But at the same time, have this running in parallel with this, um, uh, this open up boundary course format. And that, in fact, is a critical point of uh, difference, so to speak, you know, from a business model perspective when compared to a number of the commercial MOOC providers. 
there is no way that a commercial MOOC provider would easily be able to replicate that model, uh, simply because we entirely OER based, right? And our technologies are specifically designed and our, the pedagogy is designed in ways that would facilitate use across different systems. And then even if a commercial MOOC provider were to take our content and slap it into their system, we would love that because that's just, it's just getting our content out to more learners who would come to our mm. partner institutions for assessment services. <laughs> it's as simple as that, yeah. And, and so this is the, the value of sort of kind of the open source model that we're doing, so being so radically open around our course content. It forces us to think very, very carefully around what is our critical points of difference in terms of our business model. And the only way the, the, the sort of the OERU components of this business model are going to succeed is by adding substantive value. And the substantive value is assessment services for real academic credit. Substantive value are things like um, the one or two partners that are wanting to explore this model um, sort of pay as you go tutorial services. So, you know, got a learner out there on their mobile phone. Hey, I want to pay 10 bucks just to get a bit of help with this problem. And start building systems where you've got senior postgraduate students are earning a bit of extra money, right? But, you know, providing support as a, you know, a revenue stream model. Um, so those are, you know, some of the things that some of the partners are thinking about. And again, this is the power of kind of the OERU model. Um, we've actually got two big clusters and you would have seen that Brian from our input evaluation that, that we discussed last year at the partners meeting. There's, there's a cluster that is really doing this predominantly for, you know, sort of the social good and the community service angle. But there's also another cluster of partners who are clearly doing this to think about new business opportunities that, you know, the OER model can, aff you know, can afford. But the beauty of what we're doing with OERU is, you know, those two objectives are not mutually exclusive. Mm. And, um, and, and, and I think that's kind of the power of the model that, you know, that we, you know, we're working with, yeah. Thanks for that, Wayne. Um, uh, I don't see any more questions coming in there on the text, so it might be as well for, oh, the, well, there's a comment there from, uh, Van Wiki. Van Dijk. Van Dijk. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll be in touch offline now because I want to have a chat about some of those business courses for your nieces. So, um, yeah. All right, Brian. Yeah, no, that sounds good. Yeah, it was good, okay. it was good to catch up and uh, share a couple of ideas. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll send you a copy, a I'll, I'll, uh, copy of the recording, or I'll post it on YouTube, and then you can uh, download it or decide whatever you want to do in terms of yeah. how you integrate it with your yeah. stuff. Yeah. And I'll send you a link to the few slides I used there. Well, thank you very much, Wayne. I think that uh, the OER certainly for the those on our course that are hoping to build open courses, the OERU platform is one that they sh should seriously consider, if not memberships for their institution. So um, we certainly will be interested in posting this recording for the students taking our course. Thank you very much again, Wayne. My pleasure, Brian, and, and thank you Bye all. Bye now. We'll we'll see be you in later. touch. Bye. Uh, touch by email after this. Thank you. See you later.